Hi there, Richard here as an Agile trainer and coach who also understands the ins and outs of JIRA. I'm often asked by Scrum Masters, how do you track time spent in JIRA? And also how do you report on it? What sort of reporting mechanisms does JIRA offer? The last question I often get is whether Scrum Masters should be doing it or not. Should you be tracking time spent by your developers? Is that anti-Agile? Is that something that should not be done? So in this video, I'm going to answer those questions. All right, let's have a look at how we can track time in JIRA. So the good news is JIRA makes it pretty easy. There's a couple of fields that it offers, but what's important to remember is that those two fields are visible by default if you're using a company managed project, but they are hidden if you're using a team managed project. Now, if you're using a team managed project, don't worry, I'll show you how to enable them in a moment, but let's have a look at them. So if I open up any issue, doesn't matter whether it's an epic, a user story task or subtask, you will notice that there are these two fields here. We've got original estimate and time tracking. So what do we do? Well, we get our developers to put in their estimated amount of time. So let's imagine for this one, my developer says, yes, I think it's going to take about eight hours. They add that in there. Now, when they begin working on it, all they need to do is just click on this field here, the time tracking field and enter the amount of time they spent. And so let's say my developer here, they begin working on it. They log, let's say four hours and they might put in a message here, started on the HTML hit save. And we can see here, it gives a nice visual indicator of the work that was logged four hours and the work that's remaining another four hours. Now you can also see a list of work logged in on this tab here. Okay, so that's uh, useful because what you might find is that multiple developers may log time against the same issue, they can do that. And you can see who has logged what through that tab. Now also what's nice about this is when you click on it again, and let's say John here logs another six hours. And that will mean that he's gone over the original estimate. And you can see here that it turns an orange color there as it's two hours over the original. Okay, so easy to see the amount of time that was logged and whether the developers are going over what they originally estimated or not. Now let me show you how to enable these two fields on a, a team managed project. So it's fairly simple. Let me go over to my team managed project here. We just open up the issue type that you want to add it for. So here I've got my user story. Now we're going to go to configure. From configure, what we can do is we just search for the field here. So if I type in original, there we go, you'll find the field there, just pick it up, drag it onto the form, wherever you want it to be. And then type in time. And there we go, I can find the time tracking field here, hit save. Okay, now I'll go back to my project. And then when I open the issue up now, we can see the fields at the top here. All right, and it's as easy as that. Okay, now let's look at some time tracking settings that you can modify in JIRA. So to modify the time tracking settings, all you need to do is just go up to the settings button up in the top right corner, click on issues. And from here in the left panel, just scroll down and you'll notice time tracking there under issue features, click on that. And you can see here are the time tracking settings. So if you want, there's a few things you can change. How many hours in a, in a day, how many days in a week, also the format, uh, some people prefer to have just days or hours visible rather than this pretty format at the top there. And you can also change the default unit. So that can be handy if the way your team operates is a little bit different to the norm. Okay. With that said, let's have a look at how we can report on this time tracking information in JIRA. So 
So JIRA offers a few reports that you can use with the time tracking feature. Now, unfortunately, the reports are only available if you're using a company managed project. So I'll show you those reports and I'll show you some alternative ways to get at the data. So if we're on a company managed project, you can click on reports here and then scroll down to the bottom and you'll see this forecast and management section. So there are these three reports, time tracking report, user workload report and version workload report. Now, if we click on time tracking report, you're going to see these settings here. And what it will do is it will report a list of issues and the estimate and the amount of time track based on a version. So you'll need to select a version from this drop down list here and then hit next. And you'll see this view. So you can see here, as I mentioned, there's the issue, there's the original estimate, the time remaining and the time spent. So that can be useful, again, if you're looking at a version more holistically and where is the time going with the issues associated to that version. Now, if you like, you can also export this to Excel just by clicking that link at the top there. And I'll show you what it looks like. This is what you'll find will be exported after you click that link. Okay, so that's the time tracking report. You can also use the user workload report. So if you want to see how much time is remaining for a particular person, this report will give it to you. So for example, if I type in John, my test user here, and I click next, I can see here that John is working on this project and he currently has one day and four hours left worth of work. So it's very basic, but it gives you some idea of the load of work on each person on the team. Now, the last report here is the version workload report. Very similar to the user workload report. Uh, you have to select a version. Again, just click next. And here I can see the amount of time remaining for each of these issues associated to that particular version. So you can see the reporting provided by JIRA is quite basic, but it might be enough for you depending on your needs. Now, if you're using a team managed project, unfortunately, these reports won't be available to you. So what's an alternative? Well, an alternative is to use a dashboard. So if you go to dashboard and what you can do is you can create a workload pie chart. So you can see here, I've got one already created. Uh, how do you create this workload pie chart? It's very easy. Just edit your board, scroll down to the bottom here. You'll see workload pie chart, click add. And then from here, just type in your project name. Then you can decide how you're going to report the data. By, I've got by assignee here, but you could pick status or issue type, for example. You can decide on which time tracking field you're going to report on, time spent, original estimate, or current estimate. Just hit save. And there you have it. Now, if you want to make the workload pie chart more specific, perhaps you want to gather the information for just a particular version or maybe a particular sprint or iteration, uh, what you can do is just simply go configure and then create a custom filter and associate it with it. So those are the options that JIRA provides out of the box. Now, if you're after a little bit more, then what you'll need to do is go to the Atlassian Marketplace and try out one of the apps that are available there. So if you're unfamiliar with how to do that, you simply go to apps, click on explore more apps, and just type in time tracking. and you'll discover a whole lot of apps that you can try out. Okay, so hope that helps. Now, should an Agile team be time tracking in the first place? Let's talk about that. So should an Agile team be tracking time spent? Well, firstly, it might be a necessity. If you have a team that's working with multiple clients on different projects, your developers might need to log their time against those projects for billing purposes. So it might be required. 
Now, where it can go wrong is when developers feel like they must get the work done within the estimated amount of time. And they might feel stressed out because it's going to take longer than what they expected. And sometimes they feel like they're going to be punished if they do not get it done again within that time. So it can lead to some undesirable results where developers start to cut corners, they are less creative, and in the worst case, they don't help their teammates anymore. So as a scrum master, what you want to do is avoid that situation. Let your developers know that it is okay if they go over the original estimate, they're not going to be punished for it. Now with that in place, what a great scrum master will do is ensure and encourage the team to get better at their estimation. Now, how do you do that? Well, once the team is comfortable with estimating, and again, they may get it wrong, which is completely fine. What we want to do is make sure that the team has a discussion about where the estimates did maybe go over or drastically under. So we can avoid that. Now, how do we have that discussion? Where do we have it? We're going to have it at the sprint retrospective. And what I uh, encourage all agile teams to do if they are tracking time spent is to look for the outliers, look for the estimates where the time spent was way over what they originally thought it would be. Now, that's actually great. It's great to have that data because you can look at it and you can ask why. Okay, why did it take so long? Now, this is certainly not any finger pointing here. We're not blaming anyone, but it's really very much getting to the root cause of what happened. So for example, a lot of times developers will say, oh, I was completely unexpected. I didn't know how complex it was. You know, we only uncovered certain requirements as we got into it. It's very common. Now what we want to do, once we understand that reason, we can now say, okay, what strategies could we put in place to avoid that in future? How could we get better at estimating? And so what can happen then is the team might say, oh, maybe we need to have more detail with our requirements perhaps, or maybe we need to do some research or familiarize with the technology beforehand or create a proof of concept. So they can find ways to get better at their estimation and also consider this data for future work. They can say, oh, remember that item? We thought it would only take two hours and it took us two days. And they can say this item that we're about to do is similar to that. So let's not make the same mistake again. Okay, so you can see that time tracking can actually be really beneficial for a team as long as they learn from the data and they find ways to improve their estimation. And in turn, they'll find that actually they get really good at estimation, they're very predictable, and they're able to achieve what they say that would achieve. Now, when a team is there, they're much more confident, a lot less stress, and then motivation goes up. And that's all because, again, they've been time tracking, but in a, in a more healthy way. Okay, so I hope that helps some of you out there. Now to wrap up this video, there's usually a couple of questions I get about time. Firstly, how to use time for sprint planning. Now, if you have that question, go check out this video here, my video on using subtasks and time at sprint planning. The other big question I get around time is, is one story point the same as one day? If you have that question, go check out my video over here where I answer that. Okay, so I hope you like this video. Thank you very much for checking it out. Uh, please do subscribe, give us a like if you found it helpful and share it with others if you think they will benefit. All right, I'll see you at the next video.